Welcome to Electron Line. Another very important application of partial derivatives is with the wave equation. Here we have an equation, y, as a function of x and t. y is a displacement away from the x-axis of the wave itself, and it's equal to a times the sine of kx minus omega t. Now let's take the partial derivative of that with respect to x, keeping t constant. The partial derivative with respect to x of the function, and the function is called y, is equal to, well, since we take the partial derivative with respect to x, that means t remains constant. We take the derivative of this. It gives us a times the cosine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses here, the derivative of the angle. Since t is a, is a constant, that drops out, so we multiply this times k. This becomes equal to ka times the cosine of kx minus omega t. Now we take the second derivative of the function y with respect to x. And here again, we take the derivative of the cosine, which is now the negative sine. We get ka times the negative sine of the angle kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle, which again is times k, because omega t is a constant. And that becomes equal to minus k squared times a sine of kx minus omega t. And that's the partial of the, the, the second partial derivative of the function with respect to x. Now we're going to take the partial derivative of the equation with respect to t. So the partial of y with respect to t is equal to, again, we take the derivative of this, which is a times the cosine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle, but in this case, it, it's with respect to t. kx becomes a zero then when we take the derivative, and it's times the minus omega. So this becomes minus omega a times the cosine of kx minus omega t. Now we take the second partial derivative of the function with respect to time, and that gives us the negative sine, so minus omega times a times the negative sine of kx minus omega t times the derivative of the angle, again, with respect to t, that becomes a minus omega which means that this is equal to a minus times a minus times a minus, which is minus omega squared a times the sine of kx minus omega t. Now notice the similarity between, and let me finish this up here. Okay, now that we have those two results, to complete it, what we need to do is say, if I multiply this by k squared divided by omega squared, then I can set them equal to one another. So let me do that. If I take this quantity right here and I write this as k squared divided by omega squared times the partial of y, the second, deriv the second partial derivative of y with respect to t squared, then I get the following. I get k squared over omega squared times minus omega squared times a sine of kx minus omega t. Now notice, if I multiply this by k squared over omega squared, I do this over here, the omega squares cancel out, and I end up with a minus k squared, which is exactly what I have over here, which means I want to set them equal to each other. I can then say that the partial second derivative of the wave function with respect to x squared is equal to k squared divided by omega squared times the partial, the second partial derivative of the function with respect to t squared. I need to do one more thing. It turns out that k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, which is called the wave number, and omega is equal to 2 pi times f, which is the frequency. If I now say k divided by omega, I can say k divided by omega is therefore equal to 2 pi over lambda times
times 2 pi times f. And then the two pi's cancel out, which means it's equal to 1 over lambda times f. In a wave equation, we know that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, which means that lambda times f is really the velocity of the wave. So k over omega is equal to the velocity, oh, not the velocity, but 1 over the velocity of the wave. So if I square this and have k squared over omega squared, this is the same as 1 over velocity squared. This is equal to 1 over velocity squared which means I can replace k squared over omega squared by 1 over the velocity squared, which finally means that the, partial, the second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to x squared is equal to 1 over the velocity squared of the wave times the, par the second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time. And this then becomes the bona fide wave equation of any wave. If the wave equation satisfies this equation, then we know it's a true wave equation. And notice how it's written as partial derivatives. In the first case, the second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to the variable x position. And on this side is the second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to t, the time. And that's how we can use partial derivatives to describe waves in space or waves of electromagnetic radiation or waves on a string or waves of any type this is how it can be written using partial derivatives. That's how it's done.